Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. We have three big topics to talk about today. Oxalic acid, does it contaminate your honey? And some people think that that is completely wrong to do so. Well, the EPA does not share that view, apparently. And I, I agree with them. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. I mean, just oxalic acid. Look at this video right here, and you can see how we're using it. Basically, for those of you who don't know, we're taking oxalic acid crystals, which are pretty large. I'd say they're somewhere between a sugar crystal size to a salt um, grain size, somewhere in, you know, in between that. And these vaporizers are causing them to sublime. It's not actually technically vaporizing them. It goes into a solid form, to a gaseous form, right back into a solid. But when it comes back into a solid again, instead of being large crystals of oxalic acid, it is going to be in micro crystals. Micro crystals, I don't know what the correct term is, but it basically coats the bees and the inside of the hive with a very, very thin layer of oxalic acid crystals. And this helps reduce mite loads. However, it's not extremely effective, especially when there's a lot of brood. So it is now legal to use this with honey supers. What does this mean? What are the impacts of this? Well, I think the most it's going to do, the biggest impact this is going to make is set up the president for a better delivery system maybe in the future. You know, I just don't think this is going to be huge for what it's going to be able to do right now. Why do I need a treat with Honey Supers on? It's my busiest time of the year. I'm going to be splitting colonies, keeping Honey Supers on, trying to keep bees from swarming, raising queens, getting ready for honey production, uh, you know, as far as like uh, extraction and all of that kind of stuff and hauling supers off, I, I'm, I don't have time to treat colonies and, and it's not one of those things that I really want to do either. Just because it's safe, I'd rather just not, you know, that's the way I look at it. I feel like with what I'm doing right now, it's working pretty good. So I'm treating with two rounds of oxalic acid vapor in winter time. And then I'll use the product again as we're making splits in the summer spring or fall if I create a brood break and then hit them with oxalic acid in that window with no brood, then I can get a really nice kill. In my opinion, and many other professional beekeepers' opinion, it's not very effective when there's a lot of brood and there's scientists that are showing this as well. And when do we have the most brood? During honey production. Woo, yeah. So <laughs> I just don't see how this is going to be a huge, huge deal immediately. But the precedent of, okay, we've made some headway with oxalic acid vapor um, or, or being able to be used with honey supers on, maybe now we're going to be looking a little more into extended oxalic acid release products. Maybe something like what Randy Oliver's doing, which is one of the things we got to talk about here in a second. I don't know. Um, hopefully we'll see more progress. We desperately need more progress. The number one reason you're having issues keeping your bees alive and everybody else, and why we've seen so many people losing bees this winter and their equipment's empty, is because Varroa. It is 99% Varroa. There's other problems like queenless problems late in the year. You know, there's other things chipping away like Nozema. We're fixing to talk about that. But Varroa is number one, and the viruses that they vector into the bees. So again, tons of brood during the honey super um, period of the beekeeping. I just don't see how this is going to help, but hopefully it sets up something better to come. So I'm excited about that. Read the article below. It's from um, the EPA. You can see all the information down in there, and I'm excited to see more information come out about this. I'm going to be looking for it and seeing if there's any you know, stipulations or anything like that. But yeah, so there you go on that. So something that kind of Goes along with that, unfortunately, Randy Oliver has a tumor in his tongue, and that is not good. We, Our thoughts and prayers are going out to him. For those of you who don't know, Randy Oliver does a lot of testing. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this experimental yard is because we want to contribute as well to learning more about products and bees, and we just need to understand more. There's, there's so much that we don't know. And Randy Oliver really has done so much in so many different areas of 
testing different products and things out with honeybees. And he tests oxalic acid in different forms and in different concentrations and does a lot. So he's asked that no one, you know, people don't send a bunch of, you know, get wells to his email and stuff. He's like, I'm already overwhelmed, so please don't do that. But um, our prayers are definitely going out towards him and hoping that he recovers quickly and it's a very smooth process for him. Also, some information was released from the USDA um, research for bees and it's about Nozema. I'm going to leave that article in the comments below with the one on oxalic acid being legalized to use in, with Honey Supers on. And it has to do with Nozema hijacking iron and affecting the immune system of your bees. Or basically, it's in the pollen, the iron is, and your bees are absorbing, absorbing it. And the Nozema is just basically hijacking on the way from point A to point B. And there's, there's a little more to it. Read that article. You know, this information, some of that, you know, you're like, well, how does this help me out? Well, it doesn't now, but hopefully down the road, this helps us understand better mechanisms or just what's going on in our colonies so we can be proactive instead of reactive. We're like, what happened here? And then we're doomed to repeat the same thing again. So this information is exciting. Things are moving forward. We've got to push, push, push. So I'm excited with this test jar because even if we don't figure out anything that's just earth shattering, maybe we can just eliminate some things that we're not having to sort through in the future so we can get to that stuff. Constantly be learning. That's the most exciting thing I think in the world. Boredom is my greatest fear. Thanks for always tuning into our videos. We're going to have more about these topics in the future. Thank you everyone who has subscribed. We just hit 30,000 subscribers. I'm going to be doing a celebratory video with Natalie, who has a YouTube channel, Beekeeping Like a Girl, coming the first Saturday in March. So that's a week from today. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be talking about some of my early beekeeping struggles, and I'm going to be asking her some questions. Of course, I'm, it's going to, I'm going to be kind of nervous because I'm at the mercy of a I'm a teenager, and a teenage girl for that matter, and I'm not used to being in that position. My daughter's um, fixing to turn nine, so I guess this is practice, but I know it's going to be awesome. So always, thanks for watching our videos and for being a beekeeper and for doing the things that you do to your local ecosystem, helping your bees thrive. Thanks for watching this video.